we're going to show you some uh, the newer techniques for instability repair. We're going to try to focus on some of the newer knotless fixation techniques that are very secure. There are a couple of types of label tape now. We have the one that's just plain white. Sometimes, so you want to put something that, to show it, and it helps you as a surgeon, too, to see it better. So we have this tiger tape that uh, will show up better. We've got these uh, quick pass suture passers that have the night and all. You heard about the real pass. We're going to probably be using these quick pass ones today. It's another option for you. This is the push lock. It's the one that we use with the uh, label tape. It has the 12.5-millimeter uh, length to it, so it has fewer barbs. This is the knotless suture tack here. This is a 3.0-millimeter uh, diameter, and we'll be showing you how to use that well, a little bit later as we start to put one in. But this is a, one of the newer products here that was just launched. And then we have the percutaneous set if you want to use a percutaneous anchor placement. And uh, you start out with a spinal needle to localize it, and then you dilate up, and you get all the way up to this metal cannula so that you can pass your label tapes and push lock uh, through that. It's large enough for that. So we'll try to show you how we use all of these things here today. It's a left shoulder and I have a couple of those uh, spinal needles pre-placed. This is the, the poster lateral portal for placing an anchor even down towards six o'clock. So you see the angle of approach is much better for anchors than the standard posterior portal would be. And then this is our 5 o'clock portal, even though on a left shoulder on the face of the clock it's not at 5 o'clock, but that's what Jim Taboni called it when he described it. It goes through the subscap, it's a trans subscap portal, to get a better angle of approach down to that anterior infra part. This is our androsuperlateral portal. I have it posterior to our biceps. Here is our Gemini cannula in the front. It's very useful in these instability cases. Now, this is a sheathless arthroscope that's more rigid. For instabilities, I'll put my three cannulas in and uh, just switch my scope from one to another without having to worry about changing sheaths or using a switching stick or anything. I've done the prep already, but you want to get all these fibrous bands off so you're all the way down to subscap muscle belly, and that will allow your labrum to float up to the level of the glenoid. Sometimes your articular cartilage sort of overhangs the edge of the corner, and so I'll take a little time to get that excess articular cartilage, even to the point I may have a little two millimeter track toward the face of the glenoid that allows me to know that I'm getting my anchor just beyond the corner of the face. Now, here's one of the problems potentially. Say you want to get an anchor in it anterior inferiorly, and that can often be a very steep angle. Even if you've lost a little bit of bone, it's particularly steep, and it can be hard to get good purchase there for your lower anchor. Anchor. So you may want to consider a five o'clock portal. This is the angle of approach you would have through the cannula and look at what a direct approach you've got with that lower trans subscap portal. So we've got our spinal needle in there and we have a little small obturator that goes in through the spinal needle and then it comes out into the joint. Now we can take our spinal needle out. Now at this point you need to make a little stab incision alongside that little obturator so you can get your dilators in there. And now we're going to dilate this up and now we'll just dilate with our spear and you see over the top of our spear we have that 4.5 inner diameter metal cannula that will allow us to insert some instruments as well. And now we need to push that cannula down as well with it. So now we have everything down in there. The next thing I want to do is we're going to go ahead and place our labral tape. So we'll take a, a quick pass. So I'm going to come through my standard anterior portal and we'll just pass that through the posterior portal, bring it out, and we're going to thread this labral tape that has the uh, black line in it, the tiger tape. So I'm just going to get my tape limbs out now first. And so now we want to go ahead and drill for our push lock. So we're going to put our spear guide through that metal cannula and we'll just drill right there. Okay. We have this small tape retriever that will fit through the small metal cannula and we'll withdraw that. And now we can thread our push lock. It has that little orange passing tab that will help you to get it through there. Just have a little bit of slack before you start to impact it. Okay, so you hit it down until the first thread hits bone and then you take that little orange tab off the top and now you impact it the rest of the way down to the line. And then you just seven or eight turns counterclockwise and that's it. There's a small tape cutter. And that's so small it actually goes into that little hole you drilled to some extent. 
So probably that's what I'm going to do next, is I'm going to get my uh, most inferior anchor. So now we put that rod down there. So you want to make a little skin puncture right alongside there, and then we'll get our first dilator down there. And you need to visualize it, you need to be sure it went all the way down. I'm going to go ahead and put in that same assembly. We're going to use the spear and we're going to use that little metal cannula as well for back here. You know, up until now we used to always say, well, in order to tension things inferiorly, you need to tie knots. And with this knotless suture tack, that's not necessarily the case anymore. There's a nice animation that shows how it works, and you see how you pass the suture through the labrum. It has a nitinol threader that comes through the body of the anchor, and it goes through and pulls that suture through the sheath. So it ends up, it's a tightrope technology that basically is a suture core in through the sheath, so it ends up being like a Chinese finger trap in terms of tensioning it, and it won't pull back on itself. So it's a no-slip, knotless type of a loop there. So now let's go ahead and uh, drill this. See how you can get all the way down to a six o'clock position? And that's just another reason to maybe take a, a little bit of the cartilage off so you have like a two millimeter track of bare bone to aim at. But if you get one a six o'clock anchor, you need to do it from a posterior lateral portal. So now we'll put the anchor down. I'll take out the spear also. Okay, so now if you look out through this canyon, you see what we've got? We have two nitinol limbs. One has a loop on it, and the other one is straight. So what we have to do is pass the suture through the labrum, and then we're going to thread it through the anchor with the nitinol. I'm going to use this quick pass suture passer and see how I can get right down at 6 o'clock to pass this. You don't want to go real deep. You just feel it pop through, and then you come through like so. I'm just going to bring these out one at a time so I don't get things tangled. And then I'll use my tape retriever. We could have used the suture retriever again, but this just has a little bit less friction to it. And we'll pull that out. On the outside view, we're threading that uh, suture through the nitinol. And now we'll bring that up and through the labrum. We'll just pull the slack out there like so. Now what we want to do is bring that back up through that working cannula where the nitinol wires are. So now we want to thread this suture through the looped nitinol limb. And there's a white part here, and it's a little thinner before the markings start on the suture. So you want to double it over on itself back in the white thin section. And then what you'll do is you'll pull this down until it gets to the anchor. And once it's there, then you have a series of short little tugs like that to thread it up and through. And it comes back, and then you can tighten it with that, okay? Okay, so now what we're going to do is pass our labral tape. Now generally you're going to want, for the anterior lesion, you're going to want to have three anchors. I think for demonstration purposes I may just show two today, recognizing that there would have been one above this. Just want to come up enough so that we, we'll avoid that last anchor. A little tension in that uh, tape while we drill. Now if you have to lever the humeral head, you'd want to use a suture tack. You could use the knotless or the knotted suture tack because what happens, you'll see when we put this push lock in, you don't have a spear to lever with. So it's just the anchor itself, and you can end up breaking the anchor if you're depending on being able to lever against the humeral head. So there's a little precaution there for you to be aware of. Now if you have trouble seeing, we'll come around here. And if you can't quite see around it, I could have switched to a posterior viewing portal too. So you see how nice and robust that repair is. And now we'll go ahead and cut this with our tape cutter. And like I was saying, the tip of this tape cutter is small enough that it basically fits down a little ways into that hole. All right, and what I'm going to do here now, let's do one more of the uh, Nautilus suture tack, just so you can see that again. So now we'll drill that back here and we'll make it posterior inferior.
And so now we'll go and we'll pass this with a quick pass, suture passer again. Yeah, it's nice to have all these things in your armamentarium because there are some uh, cases where you don't have good quality tissue or you think you might think things are under a little bit of tension to where you need to have two suture limbs. So now we've got to bring our suture back through here. And now what I want to do is thread the suture through this nitinol loop, turn it back on itself, and then we'll pull it through the anchor body. Now short tugs once we're down below the surface, and now we're through, and now we can just tension it. See, I put the anchor a little bit away from the articular cartilage on the first one because I took on this cadaver a little wider strip of articular cartilage away than I would have in a real patient. So this is another thing that you can potentially do. You can grab the tissue and help reduce the labrum and then tease it up there even a little bit more like that. So you can get a really nice tight repair that way. You know, I think this is how you can get a knotless anchor down low because there's no way you could do a push lock because of the angle. You can't do a 6 o'clock push lock with label tape, but you can certainly do a 6 o'clock knotless suture tack.